Today we're going to focus on the non-metal, non-metal combinations. We described these before as being molecular covalent compounds and the bond between them is known as a covalent bond. Now this is a sharing type bond. It looks something like this. So we have these shared electrons between two hydrogen atoms. So we can talk about these as electrons being shared right in between these two hydrogen atoms. Now the electrons don't really look like this. It's more of a cloud situation. So I can find the electrons in a cloud around either one of these hydrogen atoms. You'll notice that either end of this molecule is the same. So what we want to do is take a look at the idea of a polar bond and a polar molecule. So let's first decide what does polar mean? Looking at the Earth, we know we have a North Pole and a South Pole. These are two opposite ends to our Earth. So how do you share a pizza? I mean, what do you do when you want to share a pizza? You got some friends over here to share a pizza. What do you what do you do to share a pizza? Here is how I share a pizza. Take a look. That's right. That's right. I get this, and my wife and daughter get this. That to me is sharing a pizza. Now you may not call it sharing, but it is sharing. It's just the idea is that I'm sharing unequally. I'm not going to share a pizza equally. I'm just too big of a pig. The same thing happens as we look at atoms. We can share electrons unequally. So here I have chlorine and hydrogen. Here are my two electrons, happy face electrons. They're sharing the electrons in between. So as it turns out, the chlorine atom wants the electrons more than hydrogen does. So when they share the electrons, we'll find the electrons closer to chlorine than I do to hydrogen. So what ends up happening then is I have more electrons found over here than I do over here. With more electrons found over on this edge, this creates then a partial negative charge. Let me show that to you. So this part of the molecule then is partially negative. And over here, I have this part of the molecule that is partially positive because the electrons have moved away from this edge of the molecule. So we call this molecule polar two different ends and they're sharing electrons. We'd also look at hydrogen and fluorine. So once again, fluorine wants the electrons more than hydrogen does. So this becomes our partial negative charge here, partial positive charge here. In reality, it's more of a cloud structure. The electrons are found more around fluorine than they are around the hydrogen. So they're sharing then, once again, shared unevenly. This goes back to a property of all matter they have electronegativity, the ability of a bonded atom to pull on shared electrons. So some atoms then want to pull on the electrons more than other atoms do. And yes, this becomes a trend in the periodic table, yet another trend you may want to know for your test that's coming up in a couple of weeks, or I guess less than a week now, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We could also do a graph. I know you guys love graphing, so I won't make you graph this, uh, but we can look at a graph as well. We see that same general trend we saw before with atomic radius or with ionization potential. We have a cycle within one period. As we see here, then we understand that our bonding is really a continuum. We have ionic bonding in which electrons are transferred from metal to non-metal. We have the idea of polar covalent covalent being shared once again, polar covalent, so I have electrons being shared between, but they're closer to one atom than the other, not completely transferred over, but closer to one atom than the other, creating a partial charge on either end. And finally, then we have non-polar covalent, which means I have sharing of electrons, and they're shared equally right in between the two atoms. Now, we can also have polar bonds on a molecule and the molecule itself is not polar. As we look at carbon dioxide, this oxygen wants to pull the electrons closer to it, and this oxygen, exact opposite direction, wants to pull the electrons closer to it. So what we have then is a canceling out of these polar bonds. So this molecule of CO2 is non-polar. If we look at water, however, water has hydrogen and oxygen, the oxygen, once again, wants the electrons more than hydrogen does. And since 
we have them being pulled in the same direction, we get a partial charge, partial negative charge at the top here of this water molecule and a partial positive charge at the bottom. This is what's known as a polar molecule, two different ends. It's also called a dipole. So dipole and polar are really the same thing. This is what causes water molecules to be sticky. So I have water molecules here with their partial charges. If they're close to each other, the partial positive charge on this water molecule is attracted to the partial negative charge on this molecule. We use the expression like dissolves like. Since water is polar and has a partial charge, it will dissolve other things that are just like it, polar or charged. In this first example of interparticle attractions, we see why salt is getting dissolved into water. So water rips apart the ions of salt. So there's an attraction between the ion of sodium and the negative, partial negative charge of the water molecule, and also an attraction between the negative chloride ion and the partial positive charge of the water molecule. It looks something like this. So once again, the water molecules are surrounding the negatively charged chloride ion and also surrounding the positively charged sodium ion and kind of moving them away. This is a dissociation reaction and we'll talk more about this when we get into class next time we meet. The second type is a dipole-dipole attraction. We've talked about this already before as we look at water molecules being attracted to another water molecules. It's this positive partial charge here that's attracted to the negative partial charge here. So these are two different water molecules being attracted to each other. Dipole here and a dipole here. And once again, this is known as a hydrogen bond. This last one's a little more complicated. This we call a dipole-induced dipole attraction. So I start with an oxygen molecule here, and this one is nonpolar. So the electrons are right in between both oxygen atoms, and there is no polarity to this molecule. What we're going to do is we're going to give this molecule a dipole situation. So here it is in a dipole situation. So one part is partially charged on this side, the other part is partially negative charged on this side. And we did this because we brought a negative charge close to this oxygen molecule. And when I do that then, the electrons in the middle are moving further away from the middle, away from this negatively charged thing. So we induce a dipole situation on this molecule. Now this positive charge is attracted to the negative, partial negative charge we find on the water molecule. Here's another way to look at it. Let's say that the styrofoam balls in this plastic tube are electrons. I'll bring this negatively charged tube close to the electrons. So we'll call this situation nonpolar. The electrons are evenly distributed throughout this tube. As I bring the negative charge close to the tube, watch what happens to all my electrons. They move away, creating then a dipole situation. When the negative charge is taken away, the electrons return to that nonpolar state. 